Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Allen Derry. I am the Medical Director of Infectious Diseases and Chief Innovation Officer for Access Health Louisiana. You've seen me do these updates now for several months, and in conjunction with the leadership of the ACOI, I hope these messages are helping you keep up with the latest on COVID-19. I know many of you are in the thick of the fight, and I'd like to thank you on behalf of all of us who daily focus on infectious diseases for a living, and certainly on behalf of the ACOI. Now, I live in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I serve as co-chair for the ACOI Infectious Diseases Subspecialty Section, and we are facing this once-in-a-lifetime global battle. So, I'd like to hear from you, my colleagues who are experiencing this fight from their locations, no matter where you are in the country, and I hope and I hope to hear from you as I provide my contact information at the end of each update. So please listen for that. And I do really hope that you take me up on that uh, invite. Moving forward, uh, along with the ACOI, we will continue to share information as it becomes available, as well as some hopeful progress uh, that we are seeing. So some interesting news uh, that you've probably heard uh, has been, uh, has been uh, dealing with uh, blood type as well uh, and its relationship to COVID-19. So when it comes to COVID-19, one of the most puzzling pieces of the virus is why some people are at more risk for severe symptoms than others. We covered previously on, on this vlog, this video blog, blog uh, that uh, it's not necessarily the genetics of the virus per se. Some early research uh, indicated that it was really the genetics of the host. And this, um, this next piece of research, I think, really um, adds to that. So what happened was that a genetic analysis uh, was published uh, um, uh, in the New England Journal uh, and essentially concluded that there are some genetic factors uh, within the host at play. So essentially, the authors found that patients with blood type A are at increased risk for COVID-19-induced respiratory failure more so than other blood types. And there was two chromosome loci that were associated with COVID-19 induced respiratory failure. One of these is also the ABO blood group locus. Now, blood group A was associated with a 45% increased risk for COVID-19 respiratory failure, while blood type O was associated with a 35% lower risk, again, relative to other blood groups. And it just really, it's not necessarily the blood group per se, uh, but rather it's likely the, a matter of gene expression patterns that correlate with the blood type rather, again, than the blood type uh, being a, a determinant. Um, so all of this is just part of the puzzle uh, of the virus as we hope to understand more about the biology of COVID-19. Yet, as we all know, there are still many other factors that determine how dramatically an individual is affected by illness, including, of course, uh, advancing age and other chronic medical problems, including obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and what I am also considering to be a risk factor too, which is poverty uh, and uh, low income status, social determinants of health. Uh, more about that <laughs> in up upcoming vlogs. All right. So the, my favorite story, however, is the role of social media during the pandemic. Uh, and this is an interesting story. Uh, so uh, social media has taken on a new role during the pandemic, which, uh, as, uh, as we all know, uh, is, of course, seeing changes in how people are interacting with each other uh, as the need for social and physical distancing continues. One platform that has caught on during this time is TikTok. It's actually a really simple concept. TikTok allows users to create and share 15 second videos on a topic of their choosing. And I mention this because uh, one of the real threats to our immune system, as we know, is depression uh, brought on by isolation. So TikTok isn't just an interesting form uh, um, uh, from a, uh, it isn't just interesting from a popular culture standpoint, but it's also helping people break through their loneliness which is almost as dangerous as, as the virus uh, itself. So what I love too is that older people are discovering it. Um, some accounts are actually uh, joint ventures actually between grandparents and their, their grandchildren. And it's really been a fun way for the elderly to connect with their grandkids and to overcome their isolation, which is cool since the older generation have been most affected by the result of the loneliness that has been brought on by COVID-19. 
and I've got to tell you about this one guy who's now my favorite TikTok star, and it's Granddad Joe. This guy is such an inspiration. He has 1.8 million followers on TikTok, and he's 87. He hangs out with his 15-year-old granddaughter, and they dance, and they post comedy skits. Check him out. Also, there was also a family who created the first quarantine Olympic events on TikTok, so there's a lot of creativity. Yet people are uh, also finding ways not only to be connected, but some have joined movements to do their part with helping with the pandemic as well. And this past weekend, TikTok fans who were worried about the spread of the pandemic through the potential super spreading events created a campaign to slow attendance and the potential spread of COVID-19 at the Tulsa campaign rally. Now, as an organization, TikTok is financially helping with the pandemic relief. They've committed up to $250 million to support communities that have been affected by the pandemic, such as Health Heroes Relief Fund and another $150, $150 million in funds toward medical staffing, supplies, and hardship relief for healthcare workers. Um, their other funds are helping service workers, school meal programs, immunization programs, and more. The creativity of this platform is really being put to great use, uh, and uh, and so lighten up your day a bit, and uh, and check and check out TikTok. Uh, it is a really cool platform. So stay on the lookout for our regular updates, and to read more from the sources used in this report, you can go to acoi.org forward slash COVID-19. Together with the ACOI, we will help bring you the latest information to help you respond to your patients and stay on top of this crisis. Of course, as always, please feel free to reach out to me directly at madery at mac.com. Please stay safe. We can do this together.